Hey Omega, it's Guys here. So for today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different and show y'all another passion of mine, and that is like console modding slash, you know, like controller repair, small tech repair, stuff like that. And today I decided that my beloved Xbox One controller had just finally seen better days with how it looks on the outside as far as the faceplate. Now, I did pr previously purchase another faceplate from this exact company, and that one has held up really, really well. So I could just put that one back on here, but I really like how this one looks, and I hope that the company will keep making this one here. So I decided to order this one, and as a bonus, this one actually comes with the controller grips as well. So I'm gonna be really excited and happy to see this as more of like a matching set than it had previously been. Now, obviously you wanna keep this hardware set if you don't have a dedicated screwdriver set. And here are the thumbsticks that I'll also be using in this build or repair slash replacement. I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. These were bought directly from Amazon and both of these parts together should cost you somewhere around 20 bucks. Now, as always, you want to start by taking out the batteries and once you've removed the batteries and if this is your first time modding uh, a controller, you're going to notice that there's actually a sticker behind the compartment. You need to peel that sticker off and then from that point, you'll see the screw for the battery compartment and we'll start by taking off that screw and once that screw is undone, uh, you'll be able to reach the other parts of the controller. So as you're unscrewing this bit from the controller here, uh, you're gonna notice that it's very, very hard to do. It's pretty, it's pretty nicely, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say jammed in there, but tightened in there. So you're gonna need to apply some force uh, and just press down on that screw a little bit. And once you do that and you twist lefty loosey, uh, you should be able to get it out and then all will be well. Now from here, you're going to want to go along and pick up that prior that you got with your kit and you're just going to run it along the sides of your controller. I usually start from the top just to pop it out so you can actually wiggle it in between anywhere that you see a gap. But usually for me, I start straight up at the top and you can just pop it out a little bit and then that's when you'll start getting gaps in the side of the controller like you see I'm doing here and you can either use your fingernail or you can just keep going along with that prying tool that they give you. One thing that is important to mention here is once you start getting things popped off, you are going to hear a lot of snapping sounds. So don't be too discouraged if you hear that. Uh, it's pretty normal for these controllers. They're built pretty rigid and the plastics on them are built to snap into place. And so if you hear that, don't be alarmed. It's all just a part of the process. Now that we have the controller grips undone, you're gonna go ahead and locate the four screws in essentially what are the corners of the base for the controller. Once you do that, you're going to take everything off in essentially a star pattern. So if you start from the top, you're gonna to go to the opposite side on the bottom. And then from there, you'll go up to the top again, directly above it and then to the bottom. That's usually how I do things like this. Uh, you will see a lot of automotive mechanics do the exact same thing. And the reasoning behind this is to not apply any undue pressure uh, to one specific side. In other words, all the pressure is applied evenly because you're turning them all more or less at the same time. And whenever you're securing these screws down, you don't wanna do it all 
uh, with full force. So even though you'll see me basically move on from one screw to the other, I typically tend to uh, sort of take my time and I go back and forth between all the four screws and that's how I secure it into place. And that's how you'll want to do it too if you just want to ensure that the casing for your controller stays in the best of shape. One thing I also want to point out that may be useful to you is the back screws can sometimes be a little bit weird to shake out and you may need to turn the controller upside down once you've gotten them halfway loose. And uh, another thing here too is to stabilize one, uh, you need to stabilize the controller with one hand and then in the other you'll go ahead and you'll sort of force and turn that screw out. So once you have completely gotten all the four screws out, you're going to notice that the front part becomes really, really loose. And that's because you've essentially unhinged that faceplate from the controller itself. So now you can see here that we have a beautiful, almost more like a skeletized view of what this controller looks like from the inside out. Now, obviously you can go a lot deeper than this if you you know start taking out things like the pcb all of the you know little bits and bobs like the button your xbox button controller all of that stuff but that's not really necessary here uh, for this one we're solely just going to be taking off the thumbsticks and the faceplate so that stuff can be accessed just from these four screws and then of course the screw that was in the battery compartment so to take the thumbsticks out, all you really have to do is you're just going to have to pop it right off. So you'll be directly on top of the thumbstick and then you'll just pull it straight up, almost like with a claw grip, you know, like those little crane games. You'll just pull it straight out and it should come back out. Now, do be aware that these are oriented in a fashion that they only will go in one way and you'll notice that by how that oval sort of shape looks um, before and after you take the thumbstick out so you're just going to make sure to place it in that exact same way and you're just going to pop it and press it down and once you do that i like to um, just press them up and down a little bit and uh, you know act like if you're using the controller and just make sure it feels good to you. If not, then the insides of that controller housing may require some further cleaning and maintenance, but usually you should be okay and, you know, obviously take some time to hit it with a can of compressed air if you feel like you haven't been the kindest to your controller. Now, as you can see there, the housing for the left thumbstick definitely will get sticky, but again, don't be alarmed. It's just because it needs that extra degree of rotation, but the faceplate will actually limit it so that it remains fluid throughout the entire circular motion. And yeah, it's just super normal stuff, so no need to worry. Now for this part, you're basically going to do the opposite of what you just did. So you're going to put on those screws from the four corners again, and then lastly, the screw from the back. Now I got so tired of using this cheap little screwdriver that I just decided to use my kit. Um, it's an Aurea kit and you can purchase it on Amazon. And if you're curious about which tip you would use, it's usually a T9. And uh, yeah, it just makes the process a lot easier because you have more grip from that nice screwdriver and you also just have a lot more leverage because you have something that's higher and actually closer to your center of gravity to grip onto. So.
One thing I will say that I do really like about this kit is the fact that they actually throw in some black screws as compared to the shiny, like almost like chrome screws that your original Xbox controller will come with. And it's not necessarily, you know, a touch that anyone's gonna see, but it kind of just looks nice to see it in that matte black. Uh, whenever you disassemble the controller for maintenance or anything like that. I think it's just a cool, nice touch and it's, you know, something different from the norm. Now, as you can see here, I like to give my controller a little bit of a shake. Um, once I'm done with one side. So for instance, if I've done the two screws on one side, which is technically not correct, but again, it's your choice to screw how you want to, so screw responsibly. Um, it's really just a, like almost like a quality insurance thing. So you can do, do that at any time and it doesn't really matter, but I like to just make sure before I completely reassemble my controller that it's gonna be solid and rigid and it's gonna, you know, stand up to the rigors of my play. So you'll notice that I'm doing it again here now and I'm actually going on both sides and I'm giving it a good shakedown. So something else that's really cool about this uh, kit is the fact that on the inside they've updated the grips to where you can actually see which side goes for which side of the controller. So inside you'll see a very small and faint indentation that they have there with the logo and it'll say right beside it R or L. Um, honestly, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out um, without the indentation. Um, you know, just, just hold both of the grips and see if they feel natural. Usually once they feel natural, that's the side that they'll go on to. Um, especially if you've, you know, had your Xbox controller for a long time, you'll know immediately what I'm talking about. So yeah, you just have to hold them right there beside the controller. And if they feel like they match and they fit, then you should be good. And again, you're just going to snap it all the way around like we did last time. And you're going to notice that there are some gaps there. And that just has to deal with, you know, the QA of the parts themselves. These are still very high quality parts, but again, nothing is going to be a one-to-one -one replacement. Uh, and this is kind of just proof of that. But if anything, it means that whenever you have to take this stuff off, it's going to be a lot easier for you because you're going to have gaps within between those little panels to actually fit your prying tool and pop it off if you choose to do so at a later time. And at this point, we've essentially reassembled the entire of the controller and we should be good to go. And again, this is just a quick view and another check here to make sure that everything was installed properly. If not, you gotta go back and make some changes, especially if you hear anything rattling inside. It's not a good sign, but again, here's just showing you that that thumbstick is definitely not sticky. It's very compliant and it's um, flexing in all the right directions, so. Now that we've completely reassembled the controller, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and get it paired up to my tablet. As you can see here, this controller really actually has been elevated from the swap of the thumbsticks and also with the swap of the controller grips themselves. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pair it up to my tablet, as you can see here. And we're just gonna run a little bit of a test run here with um, my GBA emulator. Uh, if you want more info, I can definitely put this in the description below. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and play some Mario Golf here.
So as you can see from these cuts here, uh, this all was from the exact same take. So I didn't, you know, edit anything out um, that didn't need to be edited out. I just didn't want this gameplay to go on for God knows how long. So yeah, the controller is all done. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.